All right, so we've got these interference patterns. And whether we do it as an animation or whether we do it as a, a two overhead transparencies or whether we do it as the, the long drawn out picture that we drew, you're going to get bright bands, dark bands, bright bands. And the bright bands get diminishingly bright as you go outwards, OK? But you get a constructive interference region that may happen in the center. Anyways, for those destructive interference and constructive interference to interferences to occur, you'd have to have some conditions satisfied. So let's say that we do have our two point sources, and I'm going to ask you to write this. We've got our two point sources, source one and source two, and I'm going to draw these waves in, in kind of a, it's a convention that people use, but maybe it's hard to interpret at first. I'm going to look at the waves side on, that is I'm going to draw, draw them side on, but of course this is an overhead scenario where I'm looking at it from overhead. So I'm going to draw it like this. And I know that I'm looking at it from overhead, but if I were able to simultaneously look at it from overhead and side on, that's what it might look like. Okay? And I'm going to draw another wave that goes to that point. I'm going to call it point P. And I'm going to draw the other wave like this. And now I want to indicate which side is the positive amplitude and which side is the negative amplitude for each of these. Uh, peaks and troughs. So I'm going to say this is positive, this is positive, this is the trough, so it's negative. Why would you choose a point to be not in the direct center? Oh, just for kicks, because it could be any random point. Okay. I'm going to say that this is going to be a negative trough, this will be a positive trough, this is going to be a negative and a positive. All right, so at that point P, would they be in phase or out of phase? Oh. Out of phase. So th they're going to be causing destructive interference. So I'll say destructive interference occurs when the peak from one wave gets the same point as the trough from another wave. Now, what made them go out of, out of phase was just the fact that one wave had to travel further than the other wave. Right? Like this point is closer to this wave, or to this, this point, than it is to this point. So the wave ends up having to travel farther, so you fit in an extra half wavelength, and that's what throws it out of phase. And that's what causes the destructive interference to occur at that point. So destructive interference has to happen when you've got two waves that are out of phase by half of a lambda, or a multiple of half of a lambda. And one way that you could express that is to say that the distance between point P and source 1, and point P and source 2, and I'm putting absolute values here, the distance between the point and the source for one point, or for one source, and the distance between the point and the source for the other source, has got to be equal to n minus 1 half times lambda, where n can take on any integer value. n is an integer. N minus one half. That's a minus sign, sorry. So N, N E Z. Yeah. N minus one over two times lambda. Okay, I'll put a box around it so there's no doubt as to where the equation ends. Oh, this is exactly like sine and cosine. Like yeah. Yeah, and it, it maybe it even reminds you of some stuff we did in sound in grade 11. Okay? Now, if you want the same scenario to happen, but instead of destructive interference, you'd like to see constructive interference, then you're talking about having one wave and another wave get to the same point at the same time from two separate sources. And I'll redraw the scenario, source one, source two. Now, let me see if I can draw this properly. Oh, shucks. <laughs> I've drawn it destructive again. Start from the top and then draw it down. Thank you. You know what? <laughs> and one, two, three, four, five. That'll, that'll do it. My waves just aren't the same length the whole way across. Um, in any case, if these guys are both positive, 
when they get there. We're talking about them being in phase upon arrival at that point, and we can call it point P. There we go. We're talking about them being in phase upon arrival, and if they're in phase upon arrival, then the following condition has to have occurred. The difference, the absolute difference, that is, between the two path lengths, so we talk about the path length difference, the difference between the two path lengths, and a path length is from the source to the point in question, would have to be the absolute value of the difference between point to source one and point to source two equal to n times lambda. That would be a condition for constructive interference. Yeah, and again, n is the integer. So that's just logic based on some background knowledge that we know about constructive interference and the fact that you have to fit in a certain amount of half lambdas to satisfy one condition or the other. So we can count off half lambdas and we can see even visually whether they're in phase or out of phase, but maybe you don't have the time or the facility to actually count half lambdas in an experimental scenario, so we're just talking about it theoretically.